In the enthusiasm of the 60s, the idea of recruiting marine partners into the military takes shape in the Navy. In Venice, California, Rick Trout, a civilian under contract to the Army, observes a school of dolphins near the shore. I was a civilian trainer inside the U.S. Navy Dolphin Program from 1985 to 1989, where I had a chance to see just how people would turn fun-loving animals like that into weapons of war. Um, it's hard to imagine, but people would actually go out, take members of a family like that, capture them in a net, put them in a box, and begin to teach them some of man's dirty tricks. Early capture methods were often uh, very dangerous to the animals. Um, many different methods, including the one that uh, could potentially kill an animal. And an unsuspecting dolphin would have almost like a harpoon thrown at him, only this harpoon would have a basketball net around it, into which he would swim and uh, ultimately be entrapped and ensnared and lured back with a line on board. The military was certainly curious about how it is they swim so fast through the water, um, how they manage to find their way, find their fish using sonar, and in an attempt to understand the biology and the acoustic capabilities of these animals, the military did study them from the 1950s through the 60s. At the outset, the Navy was interested in bionics, the study of an animal's ability to perform military operations. Where better to begin than by observing the incredible ability of dolphins to adapt in the water? Their skin is studied. The reason? To solve the mystery of how water flows all along the dolphin's body. The goal? To revolutionize the manufacture of missiles, battleships, and submarines. Enormous observation basins are built. High-speed cameras are used to analyze the dolphin's propulsion system. But the dolphins do not divulge their secrets. The military never managed to create equivalent equipment. Giving up, however, is out of the question. Testing and experimenting continue. For American scientists, there is a new imperative, finding a common language between them and the dolphins. The animals learn to respond to a hundred different commands, but only on orders transmitted by gestures. Interest is still high in Navy laboratories. Studies are conducted on the dolphin's fantastic echolocation system, or sonar, a natural detection device which permits the animal to localize people or objects at a distance. The dolphin emits a high-frequency sound wave beam in the direction of the object, which bounces off the object and returns to a receptor organ located in the jaw. That is how they decode and develop a mental image. Thus, even with his eyes closed, the dolphin can avoid traps or any other obstacles. The next step that was taken was actually to start to figure out if we could maybe change these animals from an animal who was studied to an animal who could work for us. And by using operant conditioning training uh, techniques, the dolphin is an athlete capable of diving more than 600 feet deep and can remain underwater for 20 minutes. In addition, he's a champion at detection. One question remains. Once released into his natural environment, will the dolphin return upon capturing a simple sound signal? This will be the first time that Buzz Buzz has been loose in the open sea since she was captured well over a year ago. 
As she moves slowly away, does she realize she is free? Now comes the crucial test. Will the months of careful training pay off? Will Buzz Buzz return when called, or will she, now that she knows she's free, keep right on going? Maybe back to the Gulf of Mexico, where she came from. Bob Bailey presses the buzzer. Buzz Buzz heard it. She's hesitating. Is she undecided? She's coming back. In 1965, the first operational tests. Tuffy the dolphin is part of the Sea Lab project and initiates research in deep water. Tuffy is highly trained and carries messages and instruments to a diving team located more than 200 feet deep. Victory at last. The Navy has proved that the dolphin is better than their best frogmen. Lack of visibility and currents are of no concern to him. From this point on, dozens of dolphins are recruited by Uncle Sam. Basically, the, what was discovered and the conclusion was is that we have the capability of using this animal in place of a diver. Um, these are uh, intelligent creatures. Um, who don't have the need of uh, scuba gear or any extra equipment. They have a mind that they can be directed and with certain pieces of hardware, they could become the SEAL team, if you will, of the military. One of the greatest problems facing the Navy is the protection of battleships anchored in port areas. Due to parasites and shallow water, sonars, which are extremely effective on the high seas, are inoperable in port zones. Why not let the dolphin, who is accustomed to shallower water, take over? Thanks to his sonar, this is what he is able to see. Dolphins would become, in the, in the minds of many, I'm sure, um, the perfect weapon. Uh, in fact, that's what Mr. Fitzgerald proposed to them I, I mean, when he came to the Navy in the 1960s. I have the perfect underwater weapon for you. But how reliable are dolphins? After Vietnam, the Navy hesitates for a long time about sending dolphins to the front. Nevertheless, until recently, patrol boats in the port of San Diego were transporting these famous blue tents with dolphin commandos inside. As soon as she hits the water, Yemi is ready for action, although she is waiting for her latest high-tech equipment. The change from the Vietnam era was developed in the, the mid-80s, um, and that change was a canister rather than a needle. And the canister served two, two purposes. It could, on impact, eject a 45 bullet that would certainly nullify a swimmer who might be trying to do harm to personnel or to hardware that belongs to the US military. This device the animal would carry around um, would actually go up and hit or mark a diver, it would on impact detach the animal carrying the nose cone device away, the canister actually floating to the surface after impact, marking the area. But in wartime, is it better to eliminate a saboteur or capture him for questioning? Doubts arise about killer dolphins. From this point on, the primary function of dolphin sentinels is to spot enemy divers and mark their location. Good boy. 